Greetings, this is Wahid Nui Abdullah from BikesRepublic.com Today we have the new 2019 BMW R1250RT So for this uh, new BMW uh, R1250RT uh, the best, the biggest news, of course, is the new engine, the 12, uh, 12, uh, 1254 cc engine, 1254 cc engine, uh, which use, utilizes uh, a shift cam technology uh, to boost power and torque, and also to reduce uh, fuel uh, to reduce fuel consumption by four percent. Now, the previous, uh, what do you call the previous water cooled boxer, were, uh, was rated as 125 horsepower and 125 newton meters of torque. This new engine has 136 horsepower and 143 newton meters of torque. Now that doesn't seem like a big increase, but uh, when you ride it, then you can really feel uh, how how the torque comes in. Now the shift cam technology is what we call uh, like like you know, the name says shift cam, uh, which means that there are two cam lobes on the on the camshaft. So the actuator actually moves the camshaft back and forth. Uh, uh, whenever it's necessary. Yep, uh, so of course, uh, as you can see, the shape, the basic shape of the RT, the 1250 RT is still the same as the, the 1200 version before this. But the main difference is, if you can see down there, uh, just in front of the engine, uh, the spoilers down there, uh, that's basically the distinguishing feature between the old bike and the new bike. Uh, so BMW, I guess BMW decided to keep this basic shape is because uh, this shape has worked uh, to be the best because uh, in terms of aerodynamics, in terms of sitting position, in terms of riding dynamics, it's still as good as it is. Uh, in fact, uh, even though it's big and uh, it's not, it's not, a, a, it's not a, a light bike, but because of the dynamics and because of the boxer engine with, with the low center of gravity, uh, to tell you the truth, it feels a lot like you're riding a 650cc bike when it, it gets moving. Um, and uh, all the other creature comforts are still there. You get very thick seats, uh, front and back, very wide seats, very comfortable. Uh, two big panniers here. You can add uh, uh, an additional top box if you want. Um, all, all the, uh, what do you call, the uh, instruments are all there. So, you know, that's why BMW decides to keep the old uh, uh, the old design right well this ship uh, looks the same uh, with a new engine uh, BMW did a few small upgrades as well first of all are the brakes uh, these are the new brakes the new brake calipers uh, these are really strong um, and when we comp when we compare it to the old bike this bike uh, has a lot of bite uh, if you if you came off the old bike and you come to this new bike you press the front brakes a little bit harder it bites a lot uh, front and rear brake and uh, it's, it, it becomes uh, very stable for some reason it becomes very stable when you're slowing down to a, a stop uh, now the old bike has a little bit more uh, seems to have a little bit more rear weight bias so when you come to a stop it starts to you know you, you, you're trying to stop you slow down the stop and it goes like that <laughs> the bar goes back and forth but not this one it just comes straight to a stop okay basically yes if, if you can see the switch gears they are basically they are still the same in fact exactly the same as the old bike but the functions have changed somewhat now the biggest changes are how you control the suspension number one number two is the multimedia uh, it used to be that you can uh, pair your phone directly to to the what do you call to the uh, instrument cluster now you can't because what it does is that you need to pair it to a BMW helmet with a built-in uh, Bluetooth. Uh, for for this reason, if you really want to enjoy it with your with Bluetooth in your helmet, the only choice is to get a BMW helmet. Um, with the, which in some cases I feel that it's a little bit unfortunate. But knowing BMW, most BMW owners they will buy specific BMW stuff. So uh, I guess if you look at the perspective from BMW owners, I think it's okay. Uh, but from us, <laughs> where we don't have BMW equipment, uh, it's something else. But other than that, uh, what I like to show you is that now this bike comes with uh, comes equipped with, of course, the speakers, audio system. But if you look at the the screen here, you can see some differences. Number one is this, the H. 
Now this is the automatic uh, uh, stop, what do you call automatic uh, heel stop. Uh, what it does is that if you stop the bike on the heel, uh, it will it will activate, it will grab the rear brake and hold the bike in position. So you don't need to hold the, you don't need to hold your brake lever or press down on the rear brake. Uh, the bike will just stay there. When you click in uh, first gear, uh, let go of the clutch, it will deactivate and let you go. So that is very important if you're carrying a pillion or a lot of luggage. Uh, it, it helps a lot. Otherwise, you have to you know, modulate your clutch and your, your throttle at the same time, which is sometimes a little bit bothersome. Uh, now, other than that, if you can see here, you can see Dyna and Auto here, right? This is the damper control, uh, means your damping rates. Uh, damping rates as in compression and rebound damping. Now the spring here means is the preload, is how high the bike sits at the back. Now the controls are different now, you just press menu, this button menu. Now we bring up dynamic ESA. Now this dynamic ESA is not the same system as before. This, on this bike it is called the next generation ESA, electronic suspension uh, adjustment. Previously you have uh, symbols of helmets, one helmet, one helmet with luggage, two helmets, two helmets with luggage. Now it's different. Minimum here, this is the preload. Minimum here means the rear it sits down at a much lower height. Auto, it auto compensates to the weight of the rider and whatever you carry. Max means it's the highest. So we found that actually the best uh, setting is auto. Unless, of course, you're very tall and you can put the max. But for my height at 167 cm, auto is the best. Because for this new bike, if you set it to minimum, set it to the lowest, it starts to feel very heavy in front and you know, it starts to feel like a cruiser. Why? It's because it's sitting to the back and the front forks uh, have uh, too much rake. So it feels very heavy to steer, the bike feels heavy. Now if you set it to auto, the bike sits uh, up a bit, the rear sits up a bit. So when it feels very light, it starts to handle like a, like I said, a 600cc bike or like a, uh, an oversized scooter. Okay, one great feature that BMW added to the 2019 BMW R1250RT is Quick Shifter. Uh, now, um, this is really good. Uh, we really love Quick Shifter. Uh, and this Quick Shifter, it doesn't only work on the upshift, but it works on the downshift as well. When you downshift, you can hear the engine auto blips. It goes boom, then it goes into gear, uh, which is really nice. Except that because a lot, there's a lot of torque, and if you're riding slow, we recommend that you use the clutch as normal when you shift gears uh, between 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. Uh, above that, the quick shifter takes over. You use the quick shifter, it's really, really smooth. Typical of all BMW quick shifters. So, of course, like we said, that this bike is actually not light. Uh, but then again, it doesn't feel its weight. Uh, I'll demonstrate it for you. Now, this bike is about, what, 250, 260 kilos. So, you see, you can just lift the bike like this. No problem. Okay. So the suspension is set to, uh, what you call the preload is already set to dy dynamic, which is a little bit taller in the middle of the range. Um, my, with one, one cheek slightly off the, off the seat, I can actually plant my foot flat on the ground, so which is good. And the other leg, the other foot is actually flat on the, on the what do you call, on, the, uh, on my foot pack here. Let's try the other side, let me just show you. So it's actually uh, not tall. So because it's not tall, it doesn't feel that heavy. Now, the other way, of course, uh, the other way that you know we always lift heavy bikes, especially the tall ones, off the stand is we push the handlebar to this side first. Then, when as you lift, push it here. Then it goes up easier. So you don't even have to do this for this bike because it's, the seat is actually very low. Okay. So to wrap it up. Uh, the RT, uh, even though now it's the R250 RT, remains one of our favorite bikes. Uh, the reason being that although with this size, it's a really right, right, uh, nice bike to ride. Uh, it is agile, it, is, it looks great, of course. Uh, all the comforts are there. When you ride long distance, it, you know, before, before you know it, you reach your destination because it's just so enjoyable. The size, of course, is no getting away from there. But once you go on the highway, who cares about the size anymore uh, because this is where it lives on the highway. But all in all, it's still a very enjoyable bike. The RT 
That's why the RT is, you know, it's the best, probably the best selling uh, Luxo Tourer out there. In fact, there's no other bike which can match this, except for the Kawasaki 1400 GTR. But that's a different that's a different case altogether because that bike is more performance oriented. This is more comfort oriented. So you know, so make your choices. But all in all, again, uh, we like to say that we really love this bike a lot. Uh, we wish we had 130,000 to buy this. <laughs> Who doesn't? Uh, all in all, okay. So this is Wahid Mi Abdullah from Bikes Republic. Uh, stay with us for more latest news and reviews. Thank you for watching.